Good day. Welcome dun sa continuation ng discussion natin on patterns in the Pascal's Triangle. When this discussion continues, kasunod siya nung discussion ko dun sa previous video. So, don't be surprised dun sa parang tinutuloy ko lang yung pagsasalita. Okay? So, let's proceed. Next pattern, yung pattern ng squares. Supposedly, if you take a look at the second diagonal, yung 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, titignan mo yung mga adjacent niyang values. So, 4 katabi niya sa 6 katabi niya sa 10. 4 squared is equal to 6 plus 10 or 16. You could observe that as you go down. So, 2 squared is equal to 3 plus 1. 3 squared is equal to 6 plus 3. 5 squared is equal to 10 plus 15 and so on. So, writing that identity down, that is, and choosing one, para makuha na yung mga nasa row na to, yung 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, squared is equal to yung katabi niya, and choosing 2, plus yung nasa baba nila, and plus 1, choosing 2. Now, we'll just say, we'll just note that and choosing 1 is equal to n, and rewrite yung and choosing 1 as n, para ang tatry natin i-figure out na formula ay yung n squared is equal to n choosing 2, plus n plus 1, choosing 2. You could pause this at expand yun to, yung n factorial over 2 factorial n minus 2 factorial. Sa ito rin, n plus 1 factorial over 2 factorial n plus, 1 fact, n plus 1 minus 2 factorial. And see that it will be equal to n squared, pero medyo corny yun. So what we'll try to do, na sana masundan ninyo sa explanation ko, is i-reason out natin kung bakit ang n squared ay pareho lang sa n choosing 2 at n plus 1 choosing 2, yung sum ng dalawang yun. Start by asking the question, how many ordered pairs, kj, can you form from n elements? So, 1, 2, 3, and so on, all the way to n. Gawin na lang nating first n counting numbers. Now, what I want you to see is that yung total number of ordered pairs na pwede mong gawin from 1 to n, pare pareho siya sa number of ordered pairs na pwede kong gawin na mas maliit si kkj, mas maliit yung first sa second number, plus the number of ordered pairs na mas malaki si KKJ or mas malaki yung first number sa second number at dun sa lahat ng ordered pairs na pareho yung first and yung second number. So again, the total number of ordered pairs na pwede kong gawin from 1 to n is the same as the total number of ordered pairs na mas maliit si, si KKJ plus the number of ordered pairs na mas malaki si KKJ plus the number of ordered pairs na equals k and j. Point is, yung tatlong sets, subsets dito, they encompass all the possible ordered pairs na magagawa natin sa left-hand side. So, let's compute for this. Ilan yung pwede kong kunin na first number, yung k? You have n choices. Ilan yung pwede sa second? N choices pa rin. So, the total number of ordered pairs na pwede mong gawin ay n times n, or n squared. That takes care of the left-hand side. Now, ilan yung pwede kong gawin na mas maliit si k kay j? This is n choosing 2. Ha? Bakit? Well, nakaset ka na eh, na i-arrange mo siya na yung mas maliit muna bago yung mas malaki. So, if you have n elements, pag dumukot ako dun ng dalawa, matik na ilalagay ko na yung mas maliit sa una at yung mas malaki sa pangalawa. It's like, in your section, I need two students. So, I have n students, I'll choose two. Papalabasin ko yung dalawa. Sa labas, may taong ina-arrange sila by height. Pero hindi, wala na akong pake kung anong ginagawa ng tao sa labas. All I know is that I'm taking two students out of your class, out of your class of n students. So, the number of ways I can do that is n choosing two. Then, papalabasin ko na, i-arrange na sila doon na k is less than j, or by height, or whatever. Now, how many ways can you form an ordered per kj na si k mas malaki kay j? Same argument. I have n students in your class. Kuku magkukuha ko ng dalawang students. So, there are two, there are n choose two ways of me doing that. Papalabasin ko sila. So, tao sa labas, i-arrange sila by height. This time, mauuna naman yung mas patangkad dun sa mas maliit. So, in this sense, yung pag-arrange sa kanila na mauna yung mas malaki sa mas maliit, matik na siyang gagawin nung, nung KJ. But yung pag-choose ko, I'll just parang kukuha lang ako ng dalawa from the group of, of N. Then, bahala na silang arrange So, 
that's n choosing 2, this also n choosing 2. Now, how many ways can I form an ordered pair na equal yung first and second values? Well, pag kumuha ko nung first element ko out of n, siya na rin automatic yung second. So, that's just n choosing 1. Pag nakuha ko siya, siya na rin automatic yung second. There's no need to get two elements. And finally, gagamitin natin yung identity na n choosing r minus 1 plus n choosing r. So, n... So our r is 2, n choosing r minus 1, 2 minus 1, and n choosing 2. This equal to n plus 1 choosing r, or n plus 1 choosing 2, para ma-establish yung second term sa right-hand side. So by counting the number of ordered pairs na magagawa ko from n elements, as i-divide ko siya into subgroups na mas maliit yung una, mas malaki yung una, at equal lang sila, we're able to count all the possibilities from the left-hand side, and we have shown that these two values are equal. Another surprising pattern that you'll encounter is my Fibonacci sequence na nakabaon sa Pascal's triangle. If you draw diagonal lines in a certain way, in a particular way, yung sum ng mga numbers sa tatamaan ng diagonal lines na yan, they will add up to form the terms in the Fibonacci sequence. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and so on. And it's hard to see kung saan magagaling yung pattern if we're looking at the Pascal's triangle na puro numbers. But if we look at the Pascal's triangle na combinations, if we draw our diagonals in the Pascal's triangle na gumagamit ng combinations, we could see the pattern na yung mga n tsaka yung r na tinatamaan nung diagonal lines, yung sum nila ay pareho. Meaning ito, 0 plus 0, ito 1 plus 0, ito... 2 plus 0, tsaka 1 plus 1, to 2 plus 1, tsaka 3 plus 0, 2 plus 2, 3 plus 1, 4 plus 0. So, lahat ng nasa diagonal to add, adds up to 4, lahat ng nasa diagonal to adds up to 5, lahat ng nasa diagonal na to, na n and r, they add up to 6. So, the value na ina-add up nila, they will correspond to that value plus 1 na term nitong Fibonacci sequence. So, yung first term ng Fibonacci sequence, yun yung mga nag-add up sa 0. Second term, nag a sa 1. Fourth term, mga, mga nag a sa 3. So we could write it as the n plus 1 term of the Fibonacci sequence. This is equal to the sum of all entries in the Pascal's triangle na nag a up yung n and r to yung n dito. Now, yung proof nito, kahit i-try ko siya explain, medyo beyond na siya ng scope natin. So I will skip that proof and just mention this pattern to you. Another such pattern na hindi na natin i-try i-prove but you observe na lang natin is that is that the Pascal's triangle can be connected to the Sierpinski fractal. So let, let's go to this link to lead us here to a page on the Sierpinski triangle and we can see here that this was, it was named after the Polish mathematician Vaclav Sierpinski. And to generate the Sierpinski triangle, uh, we connect the midpoint of the sides of this triangle. And we keep doing that with the sub-triangles na mapaform natin. And so, and keep doing that continuously to form a fractal. So, something like this. So, this is a Sierpinski gasket or the Sierpinski triangle. Gasket kasi parang may buta sa gitna. And as you zoom in sa bawat sub-triangles, parang dapat kamukha pa rin niya yung source triangle natin. So, let's go back sa Pascal's triangle. It turns out that if you color in lahat ng even numbers sa Pascal's triangle and as you keep generating this, so form niya yung Sierpinski pattern. But this time, instead of going in to see more of the same pattern, you have to go out. So if you, as you expand the Pascal's triangle, and you can see here that it's already starting na buuin yung triangle na white, may form na Sierpinski triangle yung... Pascal's triangle, if you take a look at the odd and the even entries. The last pattern we'll look at is related din sa kung paano nyo ginamit yung Pascal's triangle ng grade 7 kayo, which is binomial expansion. Na, di ba? X plus Y quantity raised to N. Titignan natin yung nth row in the Pascal's triangle. Tapos yun yung coefficients ng expansion natin. So you might notice that each row of the Pascal's triangle, pag kinuha natin sila, they seem to correspond to the powers of 11. 
11 raised to 0 is equal to 1. 11 to the first power is 11. 11 squared is 121. 11 cubed is 1,331. 11 to the fourth is 14,641. Although 11 to the fifth, which is 161,051, hindi na siya parehong pareho dito. But if you break it down into its place values, like ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, hun ten thousands, and hundred thousands, yung ones natin ay one, tens is five, hundreds is ten. So magsispill lang siya dun sa, sa next. Uh, thousands is ten, ten thousands is five. It will still be equal to eleven to the fifth. And yung reason for that is by binomial expansion. 11 is equal to 10 plus 1 raised to the 5th power. So, anong ginagawa natin sa grade 7? Yung 5, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Siya yung power, ay siya yung coefficients ng bawat term. Then, yung first term will be yung x, in this case, 10, raised to the 5th power. Then, nagde-decrease yung power ni x, in this case, 10, from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Then, dito, 0. Then, yung 1, nag increase yung power na 1, 1. 1 squared, 1 cube, 1 to the 4th, 1 to the 5th, such that each term, yung sums ng powers nila ay 5. So, 4 plus 1, 3 plus 2, 2 plus 3, 1 plus 4, and 0 plus 5. And since yung 10 mo, yung ni-raise mo to a power, siya yung nagbibigay ng place value dun sa bawat coefficient ng expansion mo na nanggagaling sa entries ng Pascal's triangle. Now, in our next lesson, masasagot na natin finally yung question nyo since grade 7. Bakit Pascal's Triangle yung ginagamit natin para mag-expand ng binomials? So we'll use what we know about combinations to finally make that connection to that grade 7 question na alam kong matagal nyo nang iniisip kung bakit ganun yung gamit ng Pascal's Triangle. So I'll see you sa next video lesson natin and goodbye.